A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, better back with this welcome back to another video. Today, a fairly interesting trigonometry problem and the follow-up video today will be something really similar but something totally different at the same time as far as the solution goes. So you should definitely watch the follow-up video too. By the way, I have recently created a new channel called NP Cooking. It's the most fun I had with creating videos in quite a long time. So please make sure to check the new channel out and the videos, even if you're not into cooking. It's a very fun format. It's basically stolen from Future Canoe, but it's so much fun to do. And I'm going to find my own style at some point. But for now, it has to make do. And it's so much fun. And the videos are actually very enjoyable. So definitely make sure to check it out and subscribe to the channel if you want to support me a bit more. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, cosine x is equal to cosine of 1 over x. Um, how would you approach a problem like this? Engineer would say, well, I take the inverse cosine on both sides, then there is x is equal to 1 over x, meaning the only solution to this puzzle right here is for x being equal to 1. And you're not wrong. This is the only integer solution. So for x being equal to, well, in our case, plus or minus 1, it's, it's solved. This is one of the valid solutions, but there are more. If we take a look at the graph of the cosine of 1 over x for now. It's a very important graph. It's, it's one of my most favorite ones at that because it just starts oscillating very wildly when we get closer and closer to the origin. Just because when the limit goes to infinity of the cosine in the regular case, then it still oscillates. So it diverges, but we can't really say where it lands at at some point in, in time at infinity. And the bigger our numbers get, the smaller our number in here in the cosine gets overall. And the quicker we go to infinity, the more it starts oscillating towards the center. But we also have a turning point, namely we have the last extremum on this side and on this side, exactly when we have 1 over pi as being the x value. This is just because if we have 1 over pi in here, we are going to land in the interval of the original cosine between 0 and negative, and no, bit between 1 and negative 1. So the cosine graph looks like this. I hope the camera is right. And then it looks like this. So on the first part of the cosine, it starts just decreasing. This is the first interval. And on the cosine of 1 over x, it's vice versa. So it suddenly just starts increasing and it goes slowly to a limiting value, an asymptote of um, y being equal to 1. So the graph overall looks something of that sort. So as mentioned before, it just, it just starts oscillating wildly. And at some point, we get this turning point and we start to get an asymptote at 1 here. The same thing on the other side. What that also means for our problem here is we want to set this equal to cosine x. Meaning if we take a look at the cosine, which looks exactly like this, we are going to get up until inf infinity, since this part is strictly increasing, not only here infinitely many intersection points, no, also on the very right hand side and also on the left hand side of the curve. Meaning we get infinitely many solutions, not only those two integer solutions. So how can you find out something like this? So with, the, with just applying the inverse cosine on both sides, it doesn't work out. But this is only one side of the metal. The cosine of x and also the cosine of 1 over x are periodic. For each repetition or shifting to the left and right of a multiple, an integer multiple of 2 pi. So um, we, we get just the same curve once again if we shift it to the right or left. Just take a look at that. Um, if we have the regular cosine here, so this is just a tiny little bit of theory. You can skip this part if you, have, if you are totally familiar with that. So we get um, our first extremum here, our, our high point in the graph. And then we get the next high point at exactly, so this right here is pa. And then we get 2 pa here. So if we were to shift this graph to the left or right, by 2 pa, we are going to land at the same graph once again. That's an intrinsic property of the cosine. Meaning we can rewrite this problem as being that the cosine of x plus 2 k par, where k is element of the positive and negative integers, is equal to, and we get the same thing over here. We can have it with a different multiple of, of 2 par actually. So cosine of 1 over x um, plus 2 n par. 
And with that out of the way, we can, without any restrictions whatsoever, now apply the inverse cosine on both sides, leaving us with the following equation, namely that x plus 2k par is equal to 1 over x plus 2n par, where n and k are element of the positive and negative integers. And now we can just simply start solving for x. So the first thing we do is um, we can subtract 1 over x on both sides. We can also subtract this 2n par part, meaning what we are going to get is x plus 2k par minus 2n par minus 1 over x is equal to 0. Now, if you were to multiply both sides by x, we are going to get a second degree polynomial, which we can easily solve using a quadratic formula. But I want to Guys, to take a look at this part right here, what we can do is we can factor out the two part and we are going to be left with um, k minus n. Since k and n are both positive and negative integers and positive and negative integers are closed under addition and also its inverse, we can just say that k minus n is once again an element of the positive or negative integers. Just a numerical example, 5 minus 3 is 2. They are both element of the positive and negative integers and if we subtract one from the other we are going to get two which is once again element of the positive and negative integers. This is what it means for, for um, a set to be closed under a certain operation. So we are just going to um, re-evaluate this 2p being element of the positive and negative integers multiplying both sides by x under the condition that x is not equal to zero but it can be because the cosine of one over zero which is the cosine as this argument goes to infinity, does not exist. So we don't have a limit in, in here at, at zero. This is also a nice consequence of the graph. We are going to get that x squared plus um, 2 pa times p times x minus 1 is equal to zero. And now just use the quadratic formula and let our magic play. Meaning what we are going to get is that two solutions are we are going to get um, par times p with a negative sign at the front. Then we are going to get plus and minus the square root of um, par squared p squared plus 1. And those right here are two more solutions to our original problem. But we are not done yet because there is one nifty thing which I didn't notice up until checking my answer in Wolfram Alpha with the cosine. Namely, that this function right here is an even function, meaning the cosine is symmetric to the y-axis. Just take a look at that. If we were to just flip this around, looks like this, you can already see that we get the same function once again. Meaning since it's an even function, we also have that the cosine x uh, of, of negative x, negative x is equal to the cosine of x. I could just have let it be like this. Okay, so this actually, if you think about this, gives us three more ways to solve this equation. Namely, we not only have the cosine of x is equal to the cosine of 1 over x, no, we also have the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of 1 over x, but we also have the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of negative 1 over x, or we have that the cosine of x is equal to cosine of negative 1 over x. Those are four ways, and just spoiler alert, if we have it like this, the negatives are just going to cancel out on the final solution, giving us the same two solutions here once again. The only two new solutions that we get from this symmetric procedure are the following ones. If we put it like this, then we just need to uh, modify our original e equation a tiny little bit. So we get a positive x here and we get a negative sign here. We get a positive x here and a negative sign here. We bring this over here, so we get a plus. Meaning overall, what we get is just a plus 1 over here too. So x, 3 and 4 are going to result in negative p times pa plus or minus the square root of p squared, pa squared, um, minus 1. And they look extremely similar. But this plus or minus right here is making a difference when it comes to the branches of our solutions. And you get our integer solutions out when putting um, p being equal to zero into here, then this part vanishes, this right here vanishes too. So we get the plus or minus the square root of one, which is plus or minus one. Et voila, it works out. <laughs> and I'm leaving it as an exercise to the viewer to figure out what the solutions to sine of x being equal to sine of 
1 over x r and also the same with tangent or maybe mix it around. When is the cosine of x equal to the sine of 1 over x for example? Try it around and see if you can find the solutions and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, why not make sure to check out the content of today's sponsor brand who were kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now I have kind of explained the graph to you at first and I have shown the Desmos graph in between and graphically this whole problem makes perfect sense that we get infinitely many solutions. But if you try to figure out something like this, especially with the different branches when it comes to the symmetry right here and the negative signs, it gets a bit complicated. But most of the time with problems like this, they are crazy nice to solve without algebra, but with just purely graphical interpretations. And if you are a visual learner, if you learn something by doing and taking a look at, at graphs and finding out something about the transformation of a function by playing with the parameters and all of the stuff that you maybe have seen in calculus before when your teacher has shown you animations on the screen, then the contents of today's sponsor Preint are definitely something that you should check out today. If you're not yet familiar with Preint, let me explain for a time a little bit. Preint is your source for some of the best online learning platform that you can find out there on the internet. If you want to learn something in the STEM field, be it computer sciences, mathematics that we did today, physics or anything of that sort, then Preint is there for you and can supply you with the best core system that you can find out there on the World Wide Web, at least in my opinion. And the course system goes as follows. Let's say you want to learn something about trigonometry and that's just a perfect example. Then you are most likely gonna start with the basics when it comes to the geometric part, where the sine is just the opposite over the hypotenuse, for example. But this part is gonna start very abruptly because trigonometry is more than that. You can just interpret all the trigonometric um, identities or functions as being just mappings from the real numbers to an interval from negative one to one for example. So functions at that or if you want to get more complex just parts of the imaginary unit. And all of that stuff can be visualized on the unit circle. You can derive the formulas for the cosine and the sine as you have done in regular geometry before. And not only on the unit circle. All the other graphs that correspond to the trigonometric functions can be visualized very nicely. And this is exactly what Preint does. You want to find out something about what it looks like when you stretch a sine function, when you vary the parameters of functions in general, then Preint is there for you. They give you a graph of the certain function and you can play around with it, finding out more about the topic at hand in a very playful manner. And if you don't trust me on that, if you think, hey, Papa Flemmy, you are lying to me, <laughs> then... <laughs> I invite you to try out Preint for completely free today. A 30 day free try at it by using my link at the top of the description, Preint.org slash Maps. With it, as mentioned before, 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. You can try the whole landscape of Preint for free and check out their trigonometry section, for example, and see for yourself what I was talking about. And if you think, well, that was amazing, the trigonometry section and the complex numbers, all of this stuff was absolutely fine to play around with then I invite you to really make use of the link and you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. It's seriously a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to learn something new on a daily basis in a very playful way. And I seriously invite you to try it out because I do enjoy it wholeheartedly and maybe you do so too. So try it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video. And I had a lot of fun with this video. Like seriously, <laughs> that was so much fun. Um, I also had a lot of fun with this problem, but just filming it, I feel very energetic today. And I do so too on my new channel. Um, so definitely make sure to check it out and be cooking. It is links down there in the description. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flim the day. Please stay safe. See ya.